to Stamp Affair 2017. This is Lizzie Jones presenting Anniversary Tradition Year 5, and that's wood. So today I'm going to show you how to do a wood inlay technique you can do with a few basic supplies. So I'm going to start today with birch paper and um, thin wood veneer. The process is largely the same, so you can use whichever you have on hand. I just wanted to show a couple of key differences here. So I'm going to start with a Copic marker to stain my wood and um, I like using the chisel tip for this. You can also use um, a sponge and an ink pad. I've done that before in the past and it works just as well. Um, but I wanted to, to show this way because it dries a little bit faster. Um, but either will work. Uh, the idea here is to keep your strokes nice and long and keep it the grain kind of like actual staining. That'll give you a smoother finish. Um, and I like to go over it a couple of times just to make sure the color is more saturated and there aren't any obvious streaks. Now is die cutting. So you can use um, any dies for this, but cover plates, phrase play dies, um, text blocks, even basic shapes will work really well. Um, so if you're using wood paper, you can just cut like basic cardstock. I do like to use a shim just to make sure everything's getting um, a nice extra bit of pressure. Um, but there's no special technique here in terms of die cutting, just like regular cardstock. If you're using the wood veneer, um, my cuddle bug is a little bit looser than um, I need it to be for this, so I do shim with extra bits of cardstock or paper just to make sure it's nice and tight. Um, it looks like I'm really struggling here, but it's just the angle that I'm at for the for the um, recording. It's really not that difficult to get it through the machine, um, but it does need a little extra pressure, so keep that in mind. Now, you want to be gentle when you're removing your shape from your die, and that's true of either paper or veneer, so take your time. Coax it out a little bit at a time. Um, it takes, it helps to use a die with um, bolder lines, uh, nothing too delicate. I like to work my way around the edges, um, and it'll eventually it'll all pop out um, pretty easily. Then I remove the inner pieces first. Um, using a craft knife or paper piercer helps just to add a little bit of um, really focused pressure. Uh, and if there are sections where, especially using the wood near the back sort of comes loose, um, don't worry about it too much, you're not going to see it anyway. Now, here we have the positive and the negatives all popped out and ready to go. This is the wood paper, um, and this is a piece of um, sticker paper, label paper, that I'm going to adhere to the back of the die with the sticky side facing towards the front. And this is going to be the way that everything adheres into place. It's really easy. So essentially, it's like a puzzle. And if you love puzzles, this is my, the, the best part. If you don't love puzzles, this part can be a, a little bit tedious. But um, it actually does come together pretty quick. So you're just going to sort of nest in the negatives from one color of, of your die cuts into the positive of another color of your die cuts. Isn't it fun to see come together? I really, I think it's pretty cool. So once it's all assembled, um, you can set it aside to put your background together. But first, I wanted to share a tip. So if you're using the veneer, um, this one's the veneer. You can use um, a bone folder to burnish the back if the front's maybe a little bumpier than you want it to be. This will really um, sort of press everything together nice and tight and it'll smooth out the front quite a bit. You can do this with the, the paper too if you'd like because this is a great way to make sure all those really tiny pieces uh, or small pieces even are really nice and secure. So here I'm going to do the background stamping. I get a lot of questions 
about stamping patterns, so I figured I would show the whole thing here, but I did speed it up a good bit. So I'm using Sunflower Harvest for my background. Um, I'm going to stamp the flowers in Harvest Gold and the leaves, um, the larger, or the full leaf shape is in um, prairie grass. I just like to go in a clockwise direction um, or counterclockwise, I suppose you could go too. Um, I just like to go in one consistent direction, um, filling in the holes as I see them. Um, I also like to use um, a scrap piece of uh, A2 paper just to sort of plan out my design ahead of time. Um, that way I can kind of get a, a good idea of how the pieces are going to fit together. Um, and it really does help me sort of visualize what the final pattern will look like once it's all together. So I'm just going to finish up with the leaves and flowers here. And oh, one, more, one more leaf. I don't know if you'll even see that when it's all said and done. But anyhow, um, and now I'm going back in with the detail image for the, um, the leaves. I'm using ripe avocado for this. And I'm just going to, even on the ones on the very, very edges, I'm going to make sure that a little bit of it at least is showing. I like the extra pop of color in there. I think it's important. There we go. And then um, I'm going to go in with cocoa bean to do the flower centers. And I'm surprised how dark this looks when I first stamped it, um, but it does lighten up quite a bit um, as it dries. So I'm just going to finish up with the centers there, and then I wanted to add that uh, dotted ring detail, sort of a fun whimsical detail, in with the um, dark chocolate. I also really like using nature imagery when I'm using um, this wood inlay technique leaves or flowers or something. I just think it, it pairs nicely. So now it's time to put our panel in place. So that means it's time for foam tape. And we're just going to cut a few strips and adhere them to the back of our panel. You want to give pretty good coverage because you do have all those small pieces and you don't want them to flex too much and pop off. So we're going to place that right in the center. There we go. And that card is all finished. There we go. So uh, I wanted to show you another card that I did with the same technique. All of the, the steps were the same um, in terms of this background. Um, but I did use more colors. Um, and this one's a cover plate, so it's the entire background. So there you go. There are our wood inlay cards. You can see it's a really fun technique, and it gives a really cool statement when, um, when it's all said and done. I especially love using multiple colors um, on one, one panel there. So I hope you've enjoyed today's technique. Um, as well as this year's Stamp Fair festivities, and I hope you'll play along with the challenge. If you do, make sure to head over to Nicole Hattie's blog to link up your project for a chance to win a prize. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been Lindsay Jones for Paper Tray Inc. Mm -hmm.